are boys. Thousands of them travel around the world to different conflicts and war zones. But what happens when they leave the armed forces? This is the story of transition, the transition to Civvy Street. The Ministry of Defence. It's cutting the number of serving men in the armed forces after the government announced cuts to the defence budget. A study suggests that in 2015-16, just 1.88% of GDP will be spent on defence. And figures by the MOD show that 16,950 regular personnel left the armed forces in the last 12 months. And for those leaving, a life of uncertainty waits as they face the transition into Civvy Street, otherwise known as normal life. Meet Mark Swales. Three years ago, he was serving 22 years in the Royal Electrical and Mechanical Engineers. He finds he's struggling to transition. Uh, not sure really. I left the army, I'd say in 2012, uh, with no direction in life. I didn't know what to do. Uh, I expected that the, there'd be people in civilian street to help me out, to find my feet, as opposed to when you leave the army, it's a size eight up your ass. You know, see ya, thanks very much for your time and bye bye. I thought that might carry on the transition from what I call the green machine, i.e., the army, to civilian street. Uh, it's been three years and I still haven't transitioned. Uh, I, just, I, I just can't seem to gel or get that psyche that I'm now a civilian, I'm not a military guy anymore, I don't command men, I don't mentor men, I don't work on big trucks, expensive tanks, I stack shelves, you know, and just to try and keep myself busy working wise, but I haven't got any, I, if somebody had a five year goal, I have, although I've been in civilian street for three years, I still, I feel that I'm still on the starting line, I haven't transitioned at all. He says everyday life is a struggle. It's not just a change of job, but a change of mind and mentality. Some things, he says, you just never forget from your time in the wars. To basically shoot him dead. And I get, I see him many days, many days on the rooftop as a grey figure, as a silhouette. Because it was night time, I didn't really, I couldn't make his face out, but I saw his silhouette. And, and the rifle firing, the flash of, the, the flash of his rifle. Uh, so I shot and killed him, killed him dead. Uh, at the time, you just, you just don't think about it. You, it's just pure instinct, pure training. You know, you, you've got to do what you've been taught to do. And within five seconds, one of the crew said, Hey, Swellsy, did you just use your machine gun? Mark is suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. It can often distort the way your mind thinks. Jane Johnson says this is something she deals a lot with in her line of work at a charity helping those with transition. People are often struggling without understanding that they've got an issue they can have some help with. So irritability, depression, anger, lots of symptoms that together might form a post-trauma response to something. And it can happen when people least expect it. So, you know, often people, so we had one soldier who said to us, he goes out socially and then he just can't speak to anybody. He has to leave, he can't be in groups of people and he doesn't understand why. He didn't see that as being a response to the things that he'd had to deal with while he was on tour. One question many veterans find themselves trying to answer is what support is actually out there? Conservative MP Robert Jenrick for Newark believes not enough is being done to support veterans. You know, we are not good in this country at transitioning people from the armed forces back into civilian life. We haven't devoted the time, the energy, and frankly the resources that some countries like the United States have done. I think in the last 10 years, particularly with the conflicts in Afghanistan and Iraq, there's been a big groundswell of public opinion. We've got to change that and make it better. <laughs> But this is something the MOD disagree with. In a statement, they said that they are committed to the well-being of the armed forces and provide a wide range of support. They say 84% go into full-time employment, but do admit that a small number struggle.
but Lisa Robinson argues against this. Her husband-to-be was in the Marines for 22 years. She thinks more should be done. Psychological and emotional trauma goes alongside physical trauma without a doubt. You know, these poor guys who've been through horrendous, you know, experiences and then some of them life-changing injuries at the age of 19, 20, 21, you know, and the discharge with the rest of their lives to live. Of course they're going to have psychological and emotional, you know, scars from that. Um, but I th there definitely needs to be something more formalised, I think, that is more therapeutic. From her experience of having a son in the forces, as well as her fiancé, it also seems not just veterans struggle, but families too. She explains why. I mean, Steve, I can only speak for, you know, he's very honourable, really chivalrous, you know, um, and I know even today in that, you know, he, he'd die for me if he had to, you know, and that, that's just the way he's built and stuff. But the weight and the responsibility that goes with it, I, thought, I don't think people have got any idea. And I think any guy who's gone and seen active service, well, you know, whatever the age of the veterans are, there's no way they would go to that and come back unchanged. Veterans aren't just affected by post-traumatic stress disorder. Some in transition face constant rejection from people and jobs, and others are affected by a friend's loss. Mock Dowsey is another ex-forces personnel who's also finding it hard to adapt. He was in the RAF for 22 years and tells us of his experience. There was no, there was no transition support really. You once you'd left the service, you were on your own. Ministry of Defence is not there to lead you by the hand after serving your time for Queen and Country. It's up to you to get on with it, which I, I did through a lot of problems. really put a pressure on me because I come from a, a secure job. It was part and parcel of what we did. We were prepared to go to war and that's what we were trained for. We didn't think of the consequences at that time. But when the guys come back from the Falklands, then it hit us quite a bit where guys come back the friends I'd known were different people. Uh, they were strange, they were not saying an awful lot, they wouldn't go out, things like this, and it took a long time. Rodney Groker is another veteran. He, however, decided to delay transition and enter the police force, only to find out once he was run over, he was to be turfed out onto Civvy Street. I never thought about coming into Civvy Street for the simple reason that I was mad on the police. So I decided to join the police. So I really did end up leaving the Royal Navy one day and joining the police force the next day. It was a case of, you've done your duty Rodney, you're not fit for it anymore, we've got to let you go. And uh, that was it, that I was finished in the police force. And then it then dawns on you, you've got to join the dreaded Civvy Street. Mm -hmm. and, and that's where then life gets, well, you then wake up suddenly to, you're not going to be looked after anymore. So, transition. It's an ongoing journey for many. And time doesn't always heal. A few weeks after filming, Mark Swells got back in contact. Transition um, from the Green Machine to Civvy Street. Some of my friends, work friends, colleagues, army buddies that I can rely on, the, the, because they didn't get the help through the transition, through the societies, through government or whatever, they felt they had no other options but to basically commit suicide. Um, there's nothing worse than seeing that on the Facebook when you see a name, you're thinking, I know him. Then you see his face and you think, Christ, I do know him, he's a mate of mine, I've served with him in Germany and blah, blah, blah. So it was, it was just hanging heavy on me that I just wanted to get it out there as part of the, the transition process. It's not all roses that you leave the army, you get help.